I'm here with Ata Tuhakarena, the Vision New Zealand candidate for Ikaro Rafati. Kia ora, Ata, and thanks for joining us. Kia ora, Andrew, ngā mihi, and thanks for having me. Excellent. Ata, tell us why you're standing in these elections. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I'm a career politician and uh, always wanted to stand in, uh, in Parliament. Um, however, you know, I have been encouraged, I guess, over the last five years in the likes of changing my life um, around um, and, you know, stopping myself um, from becoming a statistic or a negative statistic or adding to the statistics that us as Māori represent. And I'm talking about the likes of our incarceration rates, poverty, um, homelessness, and that type of thing. So um, for me, uh, as a person that works out in the community, I see that a lot. And um, unfortunately, that's not changing a, a heck of a lot since um, I've been involved. And so for me, um, I want to stand up for those people that I represent, which is obviously Māori, and um, those who have walked through the same walk as me, um, who didn't get much assistance through the likes of the government or um, anybody else that was around, um, especially like, you know, people in the, other, in the community who would uh, turn, to, turn a blind eye, I guess you could say. Um, to us as as men and as and as as Maori who were I guess you could say riff raff um, out on the street. So um, yeah, that's who I'm standing up for for as 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 our Maori um, our Maori Fano and our Maori men, those who have been struggling um, with those sort of um, aspects on, uh, that we are struggling with at the moment. Okay, thanks for that. Um, now you you based in Wellington, which is actually outside of um, the Ikarau Rafati uh, electorate. Um, yeah. what, what, tell us a bit about yourself. What do you do for a living and why is it you want to connect mm. with Ikarau Rafati? Yeah, well, I've, you know, the um, electorate's actually cut in half. So I'm from the Hutt Valley, right? And um, the Hutt Valley, um, your cutoff is is between Te Taitonga um, and also Ikaroa Rafati. And so when you when I say I live in, um, I was brought up in Batoni, lived in Batoni, you know, and the barriers to Ikaroa Rafati is Wainua Mata, which is like a, a three-minute drive, and Nainai, which is like another, you know, five-minute drive. It's It's... You know, I don't have a connection to Te Tai Tonga, which is the majority of uh, of the South Island. So, um, you know, it, it makes sense. That it'll be Ikaro Rafati as a lot of my whānau. You know, and I do have uh, whānau that uh, were in Hastings. My grandmother and grandfather, um, they lived there for quite some time. And also my parents did as well. And I do have whānau that the forced to um, who have... Um, lived there for quite some time too. So there, there's a bit of a hondo. There is some connection to um, to Ikaro Rafati in regards to Hiritonga and Hastings area. Um, but look, I'm not just standing for the seat itself. I'm standing for all Māori, um, and especially what uh, the uh, especially for the topics that I uh, spoke, spoke to you about just earlier. Excellent. And, and what is your background? What do you do for a living in that? Yeah, yeah. So my background, um, I grew up with... Uh, I was born um, in Lower Hutt in the Hutt Valley, and then I was uh, quickly whisked away to my um, my grandmother, who uh, lived in the Waikato, and um, I grew up in Te Ao Māori, so I grew up on the pa out there, and um, you know, majority of the language that was spoken was Te Reo, and my English wasn't very, um, wasn't that good, um, you know, I knew how to say the, like, cartoon names, like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that type of thing, um, yeah. but it but it wasn't until I left um, Te Ao Māori, I guess I left the, uh, the pa and uh, I moved back down with my parents who were um, here in, in Wellington. And yeah, uh, when I started high school, I pretty much um, stayed here and made made Wellington or the Hart Valley my home. And um, yeah, I guess uh, I've catapulted myself to where I am now, currently working for the BNZ. Um, and doing uh, community stuff as well. As well. So with the BNZ, I uh, work in a support group. So that support group focuses on economic harm, you know, and it sort of ties in with the money that we, uh, the the things that we do out in the community, you know, touching on that poverty uh, poverty side, um, the domestic violence, um, and also elderly abuse that's um, happening out in in our communities. And a lot of people don't actually see that sort of stuff, and and it's and it's awesome that an organisation like BNZ has been able to jump on board, and you know help out our customers and our and our communities um, with those um, in in those areas, 
And in the community, I am a facilitator for Man Up. Um, and um, also in the process of turning our whare, my wife and I are turning our whare into a transitional home um, for those, I guess, just adding or trying to help um, the nation with the with people with homelessness and that type of thing. Um, so doing our bit, I guess. So in a nutshell, that's what I'm up to right now. And yeah, trying to become an MP. Yes. Now, um, you, you mentioned the Man Up and also Destiny Church. They are linked to your party and that. Tell us about your, your link with Destiny Church. Yeah. Um, look, I if I'm being honest with you, I had an opinion on Destiny Church and I had a I had an opinion on the likes of Man Up and, and that type of thing. But that was fed to me through the likes of the media. Um and so I used to bag them a lot, like a lot of other Kiwis and um, New Zealanders do. And it wasn't until I was facing adversity, going through a few things in my life, and those very people that I used to mock and pull down were the first people to open their arms up and um, invite me in and show me, you know, um, how to overcome these things that I was dealing with. So the likes of dysfunctions that a lot of us as Māori, you know, tend to suppress as opposed to opening up. And there was, you know, I guess you could say through the eighties and nineties growing up, you know, the, you weren't allowed to show emotion or, you know, as a male, you had to be tough. You had to be, you weren't allowed to cry. You know, if your dad saw you crying, he'll tell you to, you know, harden up, toughen up. And I think that's had a major impact on, you know, especially us males um, today, because when it comes to communicating, we don't know how to do that. And so the only way we know how to do that is by other other methods, you know, there could be the likes of domestic violence, alcohol and drug addiction and that type of thing. So that's how I got connected um, to Destiny Church uh, was through the likes of Man Up and they helped me turn my life around. Um, they shone a torch on me where I was shining the torch on others and it helped me realize the dysfunctions that I was operating in throughout my life, helped me overcome the traumas I had experienced as a young, young, young fella. And yeah, I guess you could say it's catapulted me over the last five years where I was, you know, at home living with my mum now to becoming a homeowner and a successful career in helping other people. And um, yeah, so it's, it's just been an amazing journey, amazing journey. Mm. And I also have to apologize to all those people that I used to get, I had to, you know, humble myself and say sorry for all those people. So all those people I used to bring down, but they understood and um you know they, they, they were obviously in the same position as, as me and um yeah life's good life's amazing at the moment so if you don't mind going into a little bit of detail about what you were going through those years ago before you made the change was it yeah uh, was it alcohol um what's what sort of issues were you facing yeah look uh you know i'm not here to try and bring down my parents and that type of thing it, it's it's you know they tried their best in what they were trying to do but i did um, grow up in a violent home, um, you know, where I guess you could say drugs and alcohol were prevalent. Um, my dad was, you know, physically abusive to my mother and myself and our, and our siblings. Um, but like, you know, we look at it as that's a generational inheritance, right? He's gotten that from somewhere. And, you know, we come to understand that, you know, that he had inherited that from his father. Um, and so for a young child being able to see that, uh, that became like normality, right? And, um, you know, especially with the, with the alcohol um, and parties and, and that type of thing and living a, a, a life of poverty, you know, we didn't, I didn't have like the flashiest things. We didn't have a car, um, you know, we didn't have a phone. So, you know, a lot of our travel was either walking or, um, you know, catching public transport and that type of thing. And, you know, school was a long way away. So I'm not, you know, bringing down my life. I really, um, my upbringing, I really enjoyed certain aspects of it. But then there were other things that um, I guess I was exposed to that I wish I, you know, uh, I, I didn't experience. But in, in saying that growing up and turning into an adult, um, you know, I was heavily involved with the rugby league scene um, and, you know, with sports and, and that type of thing. There's a lot of, um, I guess, alcohol involved especially after a match and that type of thing and you know that took a, a, I guess I wouldn't say I abused it but I idolized it if that makes sense like I look forward to every weekend to you know make sure I can 
get on the beers with with my friends um for lack of better words yeah and then that had a that had a total i guess on you know my relationships and you know with especially my son as well that dad wasn't around and um you know there was a breakdown there and then during that breakdown i guess you could say i started to experience the likes of um depression and anxiety um didn't know how to deal with those types of um emotions and feelings um and so what it done is, is it turned me back to you know alcohol the thing that i guess um took took me away from um feeling a certain way but like i said it wasn't until i was able to uh, uh, meet the people from man up um and, and uh, a few people in particular uh, like paris Winiata, who was running for tai hawaii um you know he was the first person that i seen and then there were others who jumped on board to help me out and um, like i said like if you were to see me five years ago compared to what i you know how things are operating right now um you know i can happily say that i would love for other men out in the community just to be able to see my walk and know that it is possible um to overcome those you know similar things that i went through and you know get their lives right well, you certainly got a tough task ahead of you because um, Mecca Fatiri, who's standing for Tabati Māori, is mm -hmm. um, uh, quite a seasoned uh, campaigner and MP in that, and she's done a lot of uh, campaigns. And then mm. the Labour's candidate, Kushla Tanare um, Manuel, she's quite mm. well known in her community and quite a mm. leader in that. Um, what, what do you think? Um, why do you think you can take them on and, and beat them? Oh, look, I'm not naive to the fact that these people are very well known within their districts and especially among their iwi as well, you know, Mecca, 10 years um, in the game and, you know, well-respected person. And obviously, as you said as well, Krishna Tengari Emanuel has been around for a while and had a lot of TV exposure and also with the likes of, um, you know, CEO of Ngāti Pro Rugby and where she is with um, New Zealand uh, Māori Rugby as well. Um, look, you know, I have to have a faith in myself. I have to believe in myself, you know. Um, as a man of faith um, there, Andrew, um, you know, knowing who I am and having, uh, using my walk, I guess you could say, um, as a representation for all those that are out there, and I'm standing up for those that um, would be considered like the too hard basket. You know, I'm looking at, I'm talking about the people who are incarcerated, that people judge, um, you know, they believe that they don't have a second, they can't overcome the things that they've done in the past and that they're always going to reoffend and that type of thing. I'm here to talk about um, getting into our kainga and our homes to transform it from the bottom up and not from the top down, not throwing money at situations. You know, if we look at the likes of in 2019, I believe there was $98 million thrown out into our Māori community to try and transform or, or try and turn around those negative statistics. But unfortunately, nothing's changed. And for me, like all this community mahi that I'm doing, I do it free. You know, it's a... And all those other people who are facilitating and getting out there in the community, they were doing it for free. So we already showed that there's a compassion and we're not here to, um, you know, pull the wool over our eyes, uh, other people's eyes or anything like that. We're, we're here to show that, look, we've got people here who actually care. We're not stuck in the office. We're not um, distant away from our communities. We are connected. Um, and so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going for that, um, through, for that angle, um, Andrew. And I, you know, hopefully people can see my heart and my genuineness and, and my compassion uh, for not only, you know, Te Ao Māori and, um, and uh, Hunga Māori, but also uh, New Zealand as a whole. Um, so it's not just a Māori issue, it is, a, you know, a man issue across um, the nation. Yeah. Now, it's, as we mentioned, it's a big electorate. Are you out and yep. about and are you getting up to, um, to Hastings and Napier and Tarafati? Well, yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. Look, um, it's hey, look. I'm going to be honest. I'm a rocky campaigner. Um, you know, I've never been one to like uh, post a million things on on Facebook and that type of thing. So it, it was definitely foreign. But um, yes, uh, definitely. Um, I'm up that way tomorrow. Um, up in Hastings tomorrow. So out there doing meet and greets, and I'm also you know putting my billboards up because I don't think I've got any up there. So it would be good if I can have some type of representation. Um, up in up in Gizzy and also um, in Hastings as well. Excellent. 
No, um, you mentioned Man Up, and obviously uh, when Cyclone Gabriel hits Hawks Bay, Antarctica, yep. um, Man Up yep. um, was sort of stepped up and uh, came and helped mm. clean up. Were you part of mm. that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I believe, I think it was Michael Ngahuka um, who, you know, obviously touched base with uh, the leader of Destiny Church, Brian Tamaki, and, um, you know, saying, you know, can we send a few guys down? I understand. It. And um, the call out went across the nation, uh, really, you know, throughout all the churches. And I think on day one, there was like, you know, between three to 400 people that, that, that t- <laughs> turned up. Yeah. And, um, and if I'm being honest with you, Andrew, I, you know, from being, I guess, from the outside looking and then only seeing what things are showing on media, you know, you don't get as much of an impact unless you were there, right? And um, yeah. when we turned up, oh my goodness, like, you know, you're seeing 40 foot containers on, you know, end on end in the middle of an orchard. And, you know, you got caravans in the middle of paddocks and cars here, there, and everywhere. And seeing the, the water line on houses and how high the, the water was. And um, it was, Look, it was it was it was definitely sad, but then in saying that, meeting the people and having like thirty guys just rock up to a house, uh, turn up to a house where you've got two people trying to you know shovel out silt, and then you know there we're there for like three hours and we smash out their house, get everything you know sort of for them so they can have their um, insurance come through and um, assess their houses and that, that type of thing. Like you just could just see that there was a bit of hope, you know, there that we were able to bring. And that for me was awesome. Um, I know we, I couldn't personally be up there for the whole month that I believe they were there. I was only there for a week and I had to come back to, to Mahi, but you know, my thoughts were always there for those people. And I'm glad that we were there um, just to, you know, add our little two cents, I guess you could say in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, how do you think the government and the councils have handled the recovery and what would you do differently? Oh, look, I, I'm i not going to name any organisations, but I believe, you know, one organisation had raised the, the likes of $21 million. And, you know, within the first maybe three months, there was only $3 million spent. I only I believe now it's only uh, recently that they've been able to allocate the, the funds and that type of thing. And... Look, I can only look at, at um, what we've done and use that as a model that, you know, somebody had the urgency, and I'm talking about Brian Tamaki here, had the urgency to send the, a call across the nation to get as many people through to Hastings. And I believe, you know, that's something that, you know, our current government, instead of, like I said, throwing money at a situation, could have come up with some sort of alternative initiatives just to get people there and, um, you know, just at least ease the burden for those that were affected because I know it's a long, it's a long haul for, for their recovery, just to try and get things back. You know, you got houses that are at level three, houses at level two and that type of thing, but, you know, at least ease the burden, um, you know, for our whānau that were affected in Gizzi, um, in the East Coast and also Hastings as well. Yeah. But hey, resilient people though, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. when you, when you look at the East Coast, um, you, you, the things that have happened there over, over uh, the last hundred years, like I guess you could say, you know, you had the earthquakes back in the thirties, um, you know, the Hastings really, really hard. And then, you know, had Bola as well back in the eighties and then, and this as well. So it's, yeah, it, it's tough for that, for that district. Absolutely. Now, some people might say that uh, there's a negative message that comes from Brian and Hannah Tamaki and from the Freedom Party. What are you, as a candidate and party, positive about? Oh, sorry, what do you mean? Like, uh, the positive? Yeah, yeah cause sorry, that, cause that's... Um, because you find um, there has been talk in the media and that that um, Brian Tamaki comes across quite angry and Hannah Tamaki, they're very angry about what's happening in the country and that, and it seems to be quite a negative message. What is mm. are you and your party positive about? Yeah, well, look, um, we're positive for change. And, you know, I, if I'm being honest with you, you know, you've got to understand that the last three years, 
have been quite uh, uh, really, really difficult for a lot of people across the nation. And, we, and if I was to talk about the things like the mandates that were implemented on people, um, that were they had to like lose their jobs, walk away from their jobs, and that type of thing, um, you know. And then we've got the government currently at the moment, you know, denying the fact that or pushing the fact that it was a choice to get vaccinated or unvaccinated or be unvaccinated. And it, it's like that sort of stuff. It's, it's, uh, you can understand why they're upset because for me, they are very, very um, honest people. Like you, when you see Brian and Hannah Tamaki, you, you know what you're going to get. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to get somebody that's going to take you on a, on a story or try and, um, you know, lead you down the garden path. They're going to tell you straight up what their beliefs are and, you know, the straight black and white type of people. Do you know what I mean? They call a spade a spade. And those are the, for me personally, those are the types of people that you want. You know what you're going to get, right? Not the ones that are going to weasel around and, um, you know, try and deflect from answering a question um, that, you know, people of the country really, really want to know. Um yeah, if you've made a mistake, put your hand up. Say, look, we made a mistake. Um, this country hasn't, and if I'm going back to, you know, the likes of our statistics, especially on Mount Māori, they haven't changed. Yeah. Um, they're even getting worse. We're looking at RAM raids, like over 600% increase from 2017 in RAM raids. You know, 52% of incarceration rates in Māori. You know, um, we're talking about the domestic violence. One in two people or Maori women have experienced domestic violence in their life. Like it's still the same. There's nothing happening. And so you can understand the frustration. Um, but like we need to keep our, our government and people in those seats um, accountable. And that's what I believe he's doing. And I think a lot of us as Kiwis or Maori or, um, or people of Aotearoa need to do that. They need to raise their, raise their voices and understand that they have a voice to be able to do that as well. Because there have been some, um, he's had some statements about what what caused the um, uh, Brian Tamaki, this I'm talking about, what caused yeah. the Cyclone Gabriel, and then also yeah. the comments about LBGTQI um, yep. community as well. Mm. Um, do, do you align yourself with what he's saying? Look, I'm not going to deny the fact that I'm a man of faith, and you know, and uh, when I say a man of faith, that I'm a Christian, and through the Christ, uh, through Christianity, there are things in the Bible um, that we would adhere to, right? And so, if we weren't adhering to the things that are in the Bible and what it says, um, then you know, obviously, you got to question yourself: Are you really walking the the life of a of a Christian? And you have to be honest with yourself in those types of things. So. This is what I mean um, when I say you know what you're going to get. Like, you know, he prides himself, you know, on his beliefs. And, you know, if he was to go wayward from what he is and steeped on himself, then what do you, what does that make him? Do you know what I mean? So, and I, and I'm, and I'm very much the same. Um, You know, like when you talk about the LGBTQ and and that type, the community, um, look, People, people tend to think that you you hate the person, right? And that um, just because we have a disagreement on what they they do behind closed doors or out in public and that type of thing, that's not it. We're against um, what they do, you know, um, but we're not against them as a person. So in saying that, they're more than welcome to come over my house if I was to have dinner or have a barbecue. Do you know what I mean? I'm more than happy to to mingle with them, but we just have a disagreement on, you know, what they do, I guess, um, in the bedroom and, and that type of thing. Because the, the message of Jesus is one of love and peace. Does your party yeah. espouse that? Yeah, well, look, I'm gonna, I'll put that question to you. What does love mean to you? What does the word love mean to you? A lot of people um, consider love to be the likes of um, an emotion or a feeling. But through the Bible, it actually explains what love is. So, you know, I'll, I'll ask you that question, Andrew. What is love to you? I'm asking the questions, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean, and like a lot of people can't really answer that question because what I said was, um, you know, it, it was true. They they link it through the likes of, um, you know, an emotion or feeling. But when you think of, when we when we refer ourselves to the Bible and what love is, you know, it says that love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It isn't proud. Um, it doesn't dishonor others. It's not self seeking. Um, it's not easily angered, um, and it keep, doesn't keep records of wrongs. It never fails. 
you know, I don't know the scripture off the top of my head, but, you know, it, it's along those lines. And so if we can look at that scripture and get an indication of what love is um, and we abide by that, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, obviously different to how somebody else would see um, love and, and peace as well. So, um, yeah, uh, look, it's, 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 a, it's a really, really broad conversation to try and condense into this interview with you there, Andrew. But, um, you know, that's, that's the basis, um, I guess, of our faith and where love comes from is understanding what love is actually first um, before we can, you know, just throw that word aroha and love around. Mm. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. Um, a few more, just a few more questions to go. Um, so there were protests last year um, uh, at Parliament, anti-vaccine and anti-mandate protests. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you yeah. attend yeah. them? Um, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, look, I, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't stay there, um, but I did show up on the days that I was able to. Um, in regards to still, I was still was still working. Um, at that point, I was um, working from home, um, and then after work, I'd go in and head in and support. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I was there. Yeah. Are you anti-mandate or anti-vaccine or both? Look, I didn't take the vaccine uh, myself personally, um, and and also I guess you could say I was I am more so um, leaning on the side that was it should have been a choice, right? Yeah. And you know we're looking at Chris Hipkins at the moment recently saying that you know it was a choice for us. However, the, we had mandates. And certain rules in, uh, that we had to adhere to if we weren't to take it, right? And so that's that's what I was upset about is that part itself that a government could decide um, that you know these are, here are your two options: you're going to lose your job, which is going to have an effect on your children and your household, which could potentially put you into a, a like a mental state, um, it will affect your mental health. Like, with, was that sort of stuff taken into consideration? Like, I truly, honestly believe. And look, I have to give it up for um, my organisation that um, they did cater for us. They didn't take the the vaccine, um, and that they were um, they were accommodating for us to be able to work from home. You know, and uh, look, I guess I'm fortunate that I was able to do that. But there were a lot. And a lot, and I say a lot. There was a lot of others that didn't have that, um, <clears throat> that didn't have that ability to go through and do that. So, you know, those are the ones that I'm, I'm more so up, upset for, and that's why I was at the the protest is, is for that purely. Mm. So now, um, what what can you offer the people of Ikara Rafati as MP, and why should yeah. that be for you? Look, I, I if. If I'm being honest, like I, I know I'm not, um, I don't have connections to Ngāti Pro or, or Ngāti Kahununu. However, like I do come with new new thoughts and new initiatives, um, things that are going to change. And uh, I strongly believe that change needs to start in the home, not from the top down, from but from the bottom up. And, um, you know, I'm going to push this, that, you know, the likes of Man Up and the likes of Legacy has an impact and it's just unfortunate that people have an opinion on a certain person that um you know that this allows for this program to be implemented into the likes of prisons um and into the likes of um you know a promoted program out of there in the community so for me i have a lot of lot of um, ideas and a lot of um initiatives that i think that the government can take um take on board you know not only to just host those who are closer to the city but you know help um uplift our whanau out in the rural areas as well um but look i know like i said before i'm not naive to the fact that i'm up against uh, you know, two giants, you know, you could say um, in the region. Um, but look, you know, I can only use this time and use this platform to spread um, what I know is going to work. And even if I'm able to have time with them alone, just to have a corridor, you know, just to be able to promote, hey, look, you know, man, this is what Man Up has done. You know, please take it into consideration if you're able to make it into um, parliament or government and, yeah. um, and that type of thing. So, yeah, if I could use this platform as much as I can to promote those things that are good, um, then yeah, absolutely, I will definitely take it on board. But look, I'm a fighter. 
Uh, could have been this, like I said, a statistic, you know, five years ago, easily been in prison, could have easily, you know, um, been somewhere other than where I am now. And I really want to use that as an example, for, especially for us Māori men. And if you have a look as well, you know, you have a look at the other the other um, electorate, majority of those are wahine, right? You yeah. look in uh, Waikato Hauraki, you look in Te Tai Hawauri, you look in uh, Mikoro Rafati. I believe Tai Tonga have got two men standing, but you know, like, and then it sort of puts a question out to you, like, you know, if, you know, especially on the Marae, the, the con, our men are considered the rangati, the, the one that's, uh, they're standing on the pipe, we're like, where are they? We are, we are our men right now, you know, but trying to stand up for um, us as Māori. And that's, a, and that's another angle as well um, that we would like to try and um, promote is to bring up our Māori men because they're caught up in other things that um, they shouldn't be like the, being in prison, um, you know, being uh, <clears throat> inflicted of domestic violence, you know, being a, a victim of um, alcohol and, and drug addiction and that type of thing. So this is, this is, this is this is what I want to promote is the uplift, especially our men, so we can transform our homes from the bottom up. Atatu Hakarena, thank you so much for your time. It's been good chatting to you and all the best for the elections. Oh, kia ora, Andrew, Ngamihi, kia koe, thanks for having me on.